This differential growth works with Blender 4.2 LTS. That's right, long-term support. My last 3D differential growth video relied on some experimental nodes that are no longer available, so this video provides a fix. As always, the blend file for this video is available through a link in the description, so check that out if you'd like, and let's get into it. Open Blender, delete everything except the cube, and add a Geometry Nodes modifier. Open a Geometry Nodes window and press Shift A to create a simulation zone. Create a mesh to volume and volume to mesh node and pop them in the middle of the simulation loop. Set the resolution to size and the voxel size to 0.1. This might be fairly slow to work with at 0.01, so let's set it to something higher like 0.1. You can set it to 0.05. You can set it as high as you need for your computer, but eventually we're going to set it. Uh, really low to get that level of detail. Make sure to set the interior bandwidth to zero so that when we play our simulation, the cube remains stable instead of shrinking down into nothing like we were seeing just a moment ago. Now let's morph the shape of the cube by updating its position attribute for each frame of the simulation using a noise texture. We'll add in a vector math add node and we're actually going to set it to multiply add and then uh, multiply by two and minus one that maps the um, RGB of the color output of the noise texture from 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 to negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1, 1. Um, and then we're going to want to add a, a vector scale node to just uh, you know lessen the amount of movement each frame. So to lessen the amount, we'll set the scale to 0 0.1. If you wanted to make it higher, go to 1.1 to whatever you want. But big steps for this are going to end up looking bad. So keep it low. Now we've got some movement going on, but you can see these grid banding artifacts, which are no good. This is what the experimental SDF volume nodes helped with, but we can get the same result by mapping the surface of our mesh to itself before converting it to a volume and back. We can do that using the sample nearest surface node, um, and we're going to be sampling a vector attribute from the mesh before it is converted to a volume and then back to a mesh. So here we pipe the position attribute node into both the value and sample position inputs of the sample near surface node. Um, the value input um, makes it so that you're sampling the nearest position surface from the target uh, mesh. Um, so that's the mesh before the volume to mesh conversion. And then the sample position is what position from the mesh that you're sampling to um, is used to find the nearest surface on the target mesh. So uh, what this does is it gets rid of the banding artifacts by making sure that every time you do to the, uh, the mesh to volume and volume to mesh conversion, you're then taking the output points and just conforming them to the previously smooth surface uh, or unbanded surface of the original mesh. And so then that keeps it uh, nice and unbanded throughout the whole simulation. So now the nodes we're setting up here are to find the curvature of the mesh, which is what we actually want to use to displace the mesh every frame rather than the noise texture, which is just a placeholder. The node setup for finding the curvature is relatively simple, but it's difficult maybe to find the intuition for how it's actually functioning. So to quickly explain that, what we're doing is we're getting the uh, position of the current point and the blurred position, which is just the average between the current point's position and all the positions of the points that are connected to it. Then we're subtracting that blurred position from the current position to get a vector that points from the blurred position to the current, posi current position. And then we're taking the dot product between the normal of the current point and that uh, subtracted vector of the current point that we just created. And so what the dot product does is it's getting the um, length along the second vector that the first vector would be if projected onto the second vector. So when you project the normal onto that subtracted vector, um, if the curvature is uh, convex, then the dot product is going to be positive. And if it is concave, the dot product is going to be negative because um, the normal will generally point uh, along in the same direction or in the opposite direction of the subtracted vector. 
um, and that's going to give us the curvature. So we're going to pop that into a node group and we're going to name it curvature so we can use it wherever we want. Although I think we're just going to use it once in this setup. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take that curvature node group and we're going to pipe it into a viewer node so we can kind of see the curvature uh, as we're working with our simulation. Then we're going to replace the noise texture with the um, uh, normal attribute scaled by that curvature value. Um, and you can see that the bulbs were a little bit close together and noisy, so what we did is we blurred the curvature attribute um, by uh, iteration of 8, and so then what that does is that makes the bulbs a little bit bigger by blurring the curvature a little bit. That's just the effect that you get. Um, and now uh, we're going to multiply uh, that value by 3.2, you can tune that to whatever you want, um, but that's just to make uh, the bulbs grow a little bit faster. And now we've got some nice curvature based differential growth happening. Um, but that's not the whole story because we actually want there to be a little bit of noise that is affecting how quickly the uh, curved area of the mesh uh, are, are growing. And so we're gonna take our noise texture and actually end up using it. Um, and we're going to pipe the position vector into the noise texture. Um, and then we're going to use the factor output of that uh, to multiply by our um, curvature times normal vector value um, to figure out uh, what parts of the mesh we actually want to grow. Um, so we're also going to multiply that factor and um, use a power node to see so you can see here how it's just growing in specific parts now, so you get this kind of cooler effect than if you just applied it evenly. Um, but we're going to want to tune uh, the amount that it grows, so we're going to pipe in uh, the noise, the uh, power and multiplied noise texture factor attribute into a viewer node so we can tweak that and see what we're actually working with. And once we're happy with the output, we're going to do one last edit to the way everything grows and that's to add a little bit of upward motion so that these bulbs kind of grow up like little mushroomy mycelial growths which is just just the artistic vision for this particular project so the way that we'll do that is we'll use an add node um, on that normal attribute vector um, and then we'll normalize that so it's always got a length of one just so we're not screwing with the uh, rate of growth that we've tweaked and set to our liking now you can see that because we added a little little uh, z component to that normal vector before normalizing it um, you can see these bulbs growing upwards over time which is the desired effect and we are in mushroom land and now we're going to go back to our voxel size that we set at the beginning and bring that down from the test parameter value of 0.05 to something like 0.02 and you can see that even in this time lapse sped up view things are not moving super quick so you'll get an idea of how quickly it actually runs and the last thing we'll do is change the cube to a monkey by tabbing into edit mode and then shift a to add a monkey primitive we'll want to subdivide that and we'll just do that with a subdivision surface modifier that we add in the modifiers panel um, we'll drag that above the geometry nodes modifier ramp up the levels to three and then we'll uh, control a to apply that modifier and here we'll just change the name of the geometry nodes to differential growth, which is what it should be. And we'll move on to the very last uh, twist of the simulation. But not quite yet, because first what we'll do is a little bit of tweaking, mostly to the noise texture, to get the growths to come out of the areas of the mesh that uh, you find pleasing. So just changing uh, the W value, the scale, whatever it is that you can find. Just This is the fun simulation time where you just edit things based off a little intuition. Maybe you want some growth to come out of an eye or an ear, whatever you think looks good. I, I like it coming out of the eye, so that's what I'm tuning for. Set that and then you're done. And now we're actually going to add a new set position node that's going to twist the mesh over time. So I like there's sort of this like spirally twisting motion that can happen, so we need to set position node for that. First, we're gonna do a little bit of cleanup of the position, so 
that's what you're seeing here and now we're going to add our twist by using a position node and we're going to add a multiply vector math node and multiply that by one zero one so x by one y by zero z by one scale that by like 0 0.01 use a euler to rotation node to create a rotation and then we're going to rotate the position vector by that uh, Euler rotation. And now you can see after a little bit of cleanup how the rotation is happening and you know now Suzanne is not only growing mushrooms out of her face but slowly deforming and twisting into an unrecognizable mess which is exactly what we want. So then the last thing that we're going to do here is set up everything for the next big part of the process which is lighting materials and rendering so let's plop in that set shade smooth node if you haven't already and set everything to shade smooth then a set material node and we'll make a material just named material and we'll set that material to material and then we can move on to tweaking that material making it nice adding some lights and then rendering out our final animation so now we're gonna add two sunlights and we're going to create them pointing in opposite directions. The one pointing down should be a higher intensity than the one pointing up. Make sure that both of their angles are quite high, like 32 or 64 degrees to give them some soft lighting. And now we're gonna go in and we're gonna use the pointiness uh, output of the geometry shader node in our um, sh uh, material uh, shader graph to control the color and also eventually the uh, metallicness and roughness of our principled BSDF node. So here we're just like trying different colors and trying different mappings of that pointiness attribute which is really just the curvature but it comes from a different place than what we calculated in our geometry nodes. It's inbuilt into Blender actually. And so we're also editing the uh, just like the fall offs and the curves that go into the metallic and the roughness versus the color, finding this sort of like purple yellow color scheme that we like, and then adding the background and balancing all the colors based off of our own artistic vision and perceptual proclivities. And then we're going to do a final render. And um, at the end of the day, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something. And above all, I hope you had fun. Until next time, bye.